Sunday would have been Martin Luther King Jr.'s 83rd birthday, and across the country, communities are marking the federal holiday with ceremonies, speeches, and rallies. In Washington, D.C., events took place for the first time at the recently completed memorial to Dr. King on the National Mall. The memorial has drawn both praise and criticism since its opening in October. Now the Department of the Interior says it will address one of the primary points of concern, announcing it will correct a quote carved into the memorial to more accurately reflect the words of Dr. King. FSRN's Alice Olstein reports from Washington, D.C. Early Monday morning, government officials and civil rights leaders gathered at the newly opened Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. As they laid a ceremonial wreath, one D.C. resident spontaneously started singing. The new 30-foot-tall granite statue of King gazes out over the waters of the Tidal Basin, and passages from his famous speeches and writings are displayed on a wall encircling the site. One quote, carved in capital letters on the side of the monument itself, reads, I was a drum major for justice, peace, and righteousness. It's an excerpt from his famous sermon, The Drum Major Instinct, which he delivered at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta in February 1968, just a few months before his assassination. But here is what Dr. King really said. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness, and all of the other shallow things will not matter. The memorial's executive architect said the passage was shortened to better fit on the monument, but many complained that it was done in a way that distorts the meaning. After months of public pressure, the Department of the Interior took the first step towards correcting the quote. Robert Stanton, senior advisor to the Secretary of the Interior, explained the process. The Secretary has issued a request, a directive to uh, the director of the National Park Service to confer with the family, with the foundations, historian, and others, and give him a recommendation within 30 days, and he'll make a determination in terms of the adjustments in the quote and what have you. Uh, I can't say what led to the decision, other than they want to have the quote reflect what Dr. King actually said. Many activists are celebrating the decision to amend the quote, including civil rights leader Dick Gregory, who marched and went to jail with Dr. King in the 1960s. I'm happy about that, but we knew that was going to happen. Gregory says it's important to get the passage right so that future generations who never got to hear Dr. King speak will truly understand his message. Here's the important thing about changing it and the important thing about him being here. Fifty percent of everybody alive in America today was not born when King was assassinated. Seventy percent of the people on the planet was not born when King was assassinated. And a hundred years from now, the greatest human being who have ever lived will be this brother here, and people will come from all over the world. That that will happen. As they celebrated King's achievements, some of the speakers at Monday's ceremony focused on modern wrongs they want to see addressed. The continuing uh, unique uh, disenfranchisement that we experience here in the District of Columbia, where we still don't experience democracy today in 2012 in the ways that others do. That's D.C. Mayor Vincent Gray, who was arrested with local activists protesting for D.C. statehood last April. He cited Dr. King's speeches on the issue and lamented that statehood still hasn't been achieved. Speaking next, Reverend Al Sharpton agreed and said the lack of D.C. voting rights makes U.S. intervention overseas hypocritical. As long as we can go to foreign capitals to fight to assure they have the right to vote and democracy, and don't have the right to vote in democracy in our own capital. The work is still to be done. The abbreviated quote hasn't been the only aspect of the memorial to draw criticism. Labor rights groups say the corporate sponsors of the $120 million memorial do an injustice to Dr. King's memory. Major donors to the project include Walmart, the target of several lawsuits for suppressing worker organizing, Boeing, who recently chose to move a factory to a state with weaker unions, and Verizon, whose benefits cuts recently motivated thousands of workers to strike. Others have criticized the memorial for leaving out Dr. King's more controversial statements against capitalism and war. But the drum major quote, a meditation on how he wanted to be remembered, will be changed in the coming months. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.